Getting to Antarctica is no simple bus ride. There's only one way there, and it's by sea. If it seems like smooth sailing at first, look again. We'll have to brave the waters of the infamous Drake Passage. This ferocious body of water is more than 400 miles long, stretching from the very southern tip of South America to the icy edges of Antarctica. Over the years, Drake Passage has claimed hundreds of human lives with its vicious winds and rainstorms. Hang on, because it's sure to be a bumpy ride. <laughs> Times have changed since the old oak plank ships run by coal-fired steam engines. Today, we'll take a trusty Russian icebreaker to tough it out through Drake's rough waters and then break right through the endless sheets of ice at the entrance of Antarctica. Did you know that only 2% of the world's population has ever stepped foot on this winter wonderland? Look around. Nearly 98% of Antarctica is covered by ice sheets that can be as much as a mile and a half thick. That means the Antarctic continent reflects most of the sun's light instead of absorbing it. So in the wintertime, the size of this continent actually doubles because the surrounding seawater freezes. Temperatures here dip below negative 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that's cold. Antarctica is in fact the coldest, driest, windiest, and highest continent on planet Earth. Looks hard to believe, but it's actually the sharp, dry winds that carve these mountains of ice into beautiful sculptures. Some of these ice sculptures are as big as castles. These ice sculptures float along the surface of the ice cold waters. But below the water surface is a very mysterious world. They may look small from above, but almost the entire iceberg is actually beneath the surface. Antarctica is made up of more than just water. It is considered an archipelago because it's really just a big sea covered with ice that is splintered off into little islands. On most of these islands, you'll find a rookery of penguins. Antarctica is truly the land of the penguins with 17 different species here. Look, there's one of the most common ones. This is the Adeli penguin. And he's easy to tell apart from the other types of penguins because he always looks like he's wearing a tuxedo suit and ready for a night on the town. The Gen 2 penguin is slightly larger. They have bright red-orange bills and a white patch behind their eyes. You might have trouble finding our next penguin friend. The emperor penguins are found in Antarctica, though rarely seen. Distinguished by the yellow coloring behind their ears and on their upper breast. And the chin straps, well, I think the name says it all. Penguins are often seen atop islands and beaches, waddling around comically. Ready, set, go. These Adelie penguins rush the water and it's a race to the finish line. It's too dangerous for penguins to dive alone, so they always try to use the buddy system. When in pairs, it's easier to distract predators who might be looking for a snack. Although penguins are technically birds, they certainly can't use their little wings to fly, as much as they wish they could. Instead, penguins use their wings as flippers, gliding fast and gracefully through the freezing ocean waters. With these underwater wings, penguins can swim as fast as 12 miles an hour. Did you know that as penguins travel underwater, they hold their breath? So every few feet, they leap out of the water to grab a breath of fresh air. This action is called porpoising, named after, you guessed it, the porpoise. Aside from a few fun acrobatics, penguins are primarily hunting for food when they venture into the freezing waters. Penguins can dive as deep as 230 feet in about half a minute. After filling their bellies with fish, krill, and squid, they quickly spring out of the deep waters and onto the safety of dry land. If they stay in the water too long, they just might become food for someone else. Not to mention, it's cold in there. 
On land, penguins are much clumsier than they are in the water, waddling across the rugged terrain. Penguins are pretty good at sliding downhill, too, using their back tails like snowshoes on steep inclines. Emperor penguins like using their bellies as a toboggan to go down hillsides or slide across flat stretches of land. Looks like fun, huh? The slick ice makes it easy for them to paddle along quickly. Without maps, don't you wonder how they're able to keep from getting lost out here in the Great White? Hmm, was that a right or a left back there? Penguins have one mission to make it back to camp with their bellies full of food to where their little chicks are hungry and waiting. Penguins breed in large colonies called rookeries that can be made up of 180,000 birds or more. In a crowd this size, not even the penguins can tell each other apart. That's why they rely on unique noises and special penguin calls to recognize each other. During courting rituals, or when a male penguin is looking for a mate, they also use other body motions, such as waving their heads and flippers. Once a pair of a Delhi or Gen 2 penguins mate, they build a little nest where the mommy will lay one or two large eggs. First, they carve a little ditch and then fill it with rocks to keep the egg dry. Ooh, that looks like a good rock. Then it's up to both the parents to keep the eggs safe and warm until the babies hatch about 35 days later. Adult penguins have to keep warm in the freezing Antarctic weather too, so they always wear four winter coats. The outer coat is a layer of oily waterproof feathers. The inner three coats are made of warm down feathers. That makes a very cozy comforter for the little eggs. Unlike most penguins, Emperor penguins breed and have their babies in the heart of winter, but they don't create a specific breeding area or build nests either. Believe it or not, this couple is probably on their honeymoon. Although there's not too much to do in Antarctica, the male entertains himself with his belly sliding while the mom-to-be patiently waits in her gestation period, which will take about two months before she's ready to lay her egg. Emperors work as a close mom and dad team, taking turns as one incubates the egg and the other goes out for food. It's a long, hard winter until the little chicks are born. Little penguin chicks are born with only one light fur coat and must keep close to their mothers at first to stay warm. Heads first. As one parent keeps the chicks safe, the other dives for food and brings it back for the little one to eat. No forks or knives needed. These hungry babies eat straight out of their parents' mouth. In about three or four weeks, the baby penguin has grown in some fur, and by spring, it will boast a thick gray coat. This bunch of Adeli chicks have grown bellies, too, and it looks like they're still hungry. Sometimes, chicks get confused and can't tell their own parent from the rest but they'll chase down whoever might have food. Hey, does anyone know who these kids belong to? Of course, sometimes parents can't find their own kids either. Hands off, mister. Get your own chick. Looks like this Gen 2 family was properly reunited. Young chicks soon seek out other chicks for warmth, protection, and just to clown around. Once the summer days roll around, the chicks will be able to swim, fish, and survive on their own. These young Adelis are learning to dive, but with their furry down swimming cap and baby fat, they're not having much luck. But with lots of practice, they'll soon be expert swimmers. Don't leave your chick alone too long. There's always a hungry skua bird waiting for its afternoon snack. Unfortunately, once the baby is caught, there's nothing poor mom and dad can do to help the little chick. For penguins, the best way to survive danger is to simply avoid it. A penguin's only real defense is its little beak, and that will almost always end up on the losing end of a battle. 
Ever wondered why penguins are born wearing this natural tuxedo? No, it's not because they are constantly looking for the next party. This black and white coloration is actually a camouflage system. On land, the penguins' dark feathers help disguise them from seabirds above. In the water, penguins use their white bellies to blend in with the reflective water surface, keeping them out of view of hungry sea mammals. But camouflage isn't always enough to survive the cold, cruel Antarctic kingdom. Named for the distinctive black spots along their white throats, the mighty leopard seals are known as the most ferocious seal in Antarctica. On land, they may seem pretty tame, lying around napping and enjoying the sunlight. But underwater is another story. Their long, smooth bodies are very muscular, and when they're in the water, there's nothing that will come between them and a good meal. The leopard seal is the only seal that actually preys on other seal species. And there have been accounts of human victims, too. Just one look at those jaws should make you keep your distance. With such long, sharp teeth, there is no doubt these creatures are carnivores. These vicious hunters can grow up to 10 feet long and weigh up to 700 pounds. Their dark gray bodies are long and smooth, built for underwater speed and power. Antarctica also has a food chain, which is an essential part of the natural cycle of life. A food chain is a system that allows one species to feed off of another in order to survive. Leopard seals are in fact so powerful that they even eat other seals. The friendly-faced Waddell and crab-eater seals are a challenging but tasty prey. Unlike the mean leopard seals, Waddell seals are not aggressive towards humans. Quite the contrary, they are like big blubbery puppy dogs toting around their smiley whiskers. You can always tell a Waddell from other seals because it simply plops down anywhere and falls asleep on its back. Obviously a lot fatter and rounder, Waddells love laying around catching some Z's after a good meal. You might think a crab eater seal gets his name from eating crab, but actually they don't eat crab. They love to eat pounds of krill, which are tiny marine crustacean resembling a shrimp. Crab eater seals have rows of interlocking teeth that strain the krill from the water, and they're happy to show them off with a good snort. These seals eat more krill than all the baleen whales put together. By summertime, crab eaters have eaten enough to just lay around sunbathing their bellies. But their tan looks silvery gray or nearly white, especially right after a good molt. That's molt, not malt, silly. Molting is when animals shed their skin, feathers, or hair. Deep below the ice and deep below the water, there's a whole other world of fascinating animal life hanging out. Like all mammals, whales have lungs and they breathe air. The key characteristics that identify whales as mammals are that they are warm-blooded, they have a four-chambered heart, and they nurse their young with mother's milk. Did you know that other than the manatee, whales are the only mammals that live their entire lives in the water? Whales are divided into two groups, toothed whales and baleen whales. The toothed whales, like the killer orca and the sperm whale, all have one blowhole and narrow jaws lined with peg-like teeth to catch and eat fish or squid. Orcas are actually part of the dolphin family and are the largest member. They are easy to distinguish by their beautiful black and white color pattern. Like dolphins, orcas are very social animals. They often travel and hunt in pods or small groups. In fact, 
They have been called the wolves of the sea because of their pack-like behaviors. Although they don't howl, they love to chatter. The bonds between pod members are very strong, and they use it as much for protection as they do for having fun. Orcas love water acrobats, tail slapping, and breaching the water's surface. One very unique behavior in orcas is called spy hopping, which is when they poke their heads straight out of the water and bob up and down to get a better look at what's going on around them. This skill is especially useful when attempting to spot animals hiding out on an ice float. An incredible technique used by the orcas when hunting together is to locate seals hanging out on ice floats and then create such a great wave that the seal is pushed off the ice and into the stomachs of these hungry whales. The orcas start out by spy hopping around a large piece of ice to see where the seal is resting. Then they all line up and rush towards the ice, almost tipping it over. Now that's teamwork. Eventually, the whales create a big enough wave and the seal slides off the ice and into the water. Check out the tail on this gigantic humpback whale. Like all baleen whales, humpback whales have two blowholes and comb-like teeth that are used to filter krill and fish out of the water. Humpbacks have a couple dozen throat grooves that run from their chin to their navel, allowing their throat to expand during the huge intake of water as they filter food. When a pod of humpbacks are hunting together, they use a technique called bubble net feeding. Forming a circle underwater, they all blow a wall of bubbles and swim to the surface in a spiral path, pushing a mass of krill and small fish to the surface. These whales are lunge feeding on krill that are floating at the top of the water near sunset. They use their gigantic 15-foot flippers, also called flukes, to help shovel the food in. Of course, every time they open their enormous mouth, they gulp in several gallons of tasty morsels, consuming as much as four tons of food in one day. Found in shallower waters along the coastlines, humpback whales like to travel and hunt in large groups called pods. Their enormous flippers make them easy to spot as they show off their acrobatic talents. These whales got their name humpback, thanks to the high arch of their backs when they dive or breach. Like dolphins, humpbacks love to leap out of the water with the force of their powerful flukes. Of course, they don't quite keep the same slender figure as dolphins, so when they come down, it's with a thunderous splash. Humpbacks can reach lengths of 40 to 50 feet long and can weigh as much as 40 to 50 tons. Believe it or not, these enormous creatures are very gentle and playful. These whales mate during the summer and it will be almost a full year until the female gives birth to a little calf. Not a cow, silly. Calf is also the name used for a baby whale. A mother whale is protective of her young one, and you can always see them traveling close together. These minke whales are the smallest of the baleen whales and are very common here in Antarctica, as well as in most of the world's oceans. They can be distinguished by the pale gray diagonal markings on their backs. With a narrow V-shaped head and shorter flippers, they look very graceful gliding through the water. These excellent swimmers can reach speeds of 20 miles an hour, but they also enjoy gentle backstrokes towards the end of the day. As mighty and magnificent as the continent of Antarctica is, she too may be in danger. Antarctica is towering with huge, steep glaciers. A glacier is a slow-moving mass of ice. 
It's formed by snow that is gathered and become compacted between mountains. Can you imagine if all this ice melted? Well, it's already started to because of the effects of global warming. In order to keep this wilderness alive and these animals able to roam uncaged, we all need to play our part in being kind to our environment and helping to make a difference. As the sun begins to set on Antarctica, it's time to wrap up this adventure of breathtaking beasts, vicious battles, and playful penguins. Thanks for joining us as we journeyed above and below a continent wilder than any zoo on Earth. Take wonder in wildlife, the way it was meant to live.